Today on Tocant, I want to share something about an Omega VIP experience that I was very lucky to be invited to and take part in at the Omega uh, flagship boutique in central Hong Kong. So first I'll tell you a little bit about what the experience entailed and how it came to be and then we'll take a first look at some of the 2021 models that were uh, announced by uh, Omega but not yet available in stores. Uh, that is the Deville Trezor, uh, the Aquaterra Small Second and then finally the new Seamaster 300. Hi everyone and welcome, I'm Ben. So last Friday, a new connection of mine got invited by Omega to a VIP private event at their flagship boutique in Central. Now, I want to give a shout out to the person who invited me. His name is Simon. Follow him on Instagram at Simon Says Wristwatch. And then the other person that tagged along was Uptick Watch Review. So some of you who are watching my channel are probably aware of his channel. Uh, I want to say, you know, he's one of the inspirations who uh, pushed me to start my own channel. He did not know me at the time, I did not know him, but uh, go check out his channel, it's excellent. Uh, he has a collection to die for, but not only that, he also has a very, uh, you know, interesting view on watch brands and insightful comments about how to go about collecting. So the three of us got invited and um, the event was between 12 and 2 p.m. Uh, on Friday during lunchtime. Now the boutique was closed to the public between 12 and 2 p.m. on Friday during lunchtime, uh, which is something very special when you imagine that Hong Kong is a city of seven and a half million people and the central business district is very busy and that's usually the time when you know people like myself or other watch collectors go to watch boutiques to try a watch on. So um, we were treated by Omega first to a presentation about case materials and it was very interesting to me because especially I like ceramic cases and they explain how you know all the process about how they go about making ceramic cases especially the uh, plasma gray ceramic uh, and then stainless steel cases how they are stamped and how many steps they go through polishing and then finally uh, there are gold cases and um, you know the different alloys that they use uh, by Sedna gold and then the Canopus white gold and how other brands for example like Rolex will, will use uh, platinum in it uh, but they also use um, um, you know metals like palladium so the whole thing was very interesting but then after that we were treated to some kind of mini lunch and we were given some lunch boxes with a chef who actually came into the boutique and you know laid down the table for us and you know a drink menu we were drinking champagne and very nice refined uh, you know food there um, so it was a very nice experience and then uh, we came to the three surprises so the first surprise is that we got to take a look at the new Deville Trésor or Trésor, but that reminds me of the fragrance from Lancome models uh, that have been announced by Omega, but which are not yet available in store until September 2021. So we were given a, you know, a first hands-on experience with five or six models, including you know, the stainless steel model and the power reserve, which looked quite good with the black dial. Uh, there was also a model in, made in collaboration with Orbis, uh, using their corporate blue color for the second hand and also a little teddy bear for the date for the number eight. Uh, that one I think uh, the blue color is a little bit too strong for me. It is, it's quite um, shocking. It's not heat blue, it's varnished, uh, but because it's using the Orbix color uh, then this is why it's that blue. But the, basically the, the, my two favorite models uh, for me were the gold versions, the green dial on yellow gold and especially the burgundy dial on the Sedna gold uh, were I think uh, you know, the, the best out of the bunch. So they are very uh, slender and thin. So yes, Omega can make slender watches when they want to and that's basically due to the hand wound you know, manual movement caliber 8927 I think in it, uh, which is uh, a twin barrel 72 hour power reserve um, it's mechanically finished, but it's quite a high-end finish. Uh, it's better than the Seamaster. Uh, comes with the arabesque, you know, Côte de Genève, as well as the full gold balance bridge. Uh, it's quite nice. They are 40 mil, but they're way smaller, I feel, on the wrist. Uh, it's very dressy. It's not really for my lifestyle, uh, but I think I can see this as, a, as an alternative to a Rolex Cellini, for example. So the second surprise was kind of a, what I call an expected surprise because I was expecting to see it. It was the Aquaterra Small Second. So this one will be available in store starting uh, August 2021. And we were presented with uh, different models, uh, both in the 41 millimeter version and the 38 mil version. 
So the 41 mil, I think the silver and blue dial will be the one that's going to be very popular. Uh, that's the one that they, you know, put all over the place everywhere in press releases and on their website. To me, that one um, is a little bit too heavy because uh, the minute and the second track uh, in the small second um, give it a very strong visual uh, appeal that uh, doesn't really quite work for me. But I believe this one will be very popular. It comes with a caliber 8815, uh, which is 60 hour power reserve. Uh, then you have the 38 mil version, this one with a green dial, which uh, was the winner for me. Um, so not because it's green, it's not because of the trend, but this one is very tastefully done. It doesn't have the track for the minute and for the second, the small second. The small second is surrounded by a white gold ring and the aperture for the date is, is, is round instead of being square in the 41 mil version. So this one for me works much better. It also wears very well on the wrist and I could almost see this one work as a, a unisex model. Uh, because the indices are also uh, inlaid with mother of pearl. So the downside is that that one has no loom though. And the third and final surprise was the one that I was the most excited about and I was looking forward to seeing is the new Seamaster 300. So officially this one is already available. However, most Omega Boutique do not have any in stock yet. So we got to see several versions, including the black dial with the stainless steel bracelet, the blue dial on a strap, and even the new bronze gold alloy version. So to me, the new 300 is actually a big improvement over the outgoing model. I had tried that model and one thing I could not live with was the thickness. It was really quite thick and chunky. But the new one, somehow they have made it thinner. So it's now 13.85 millimeter versus 15 millimeter for the outgoing one. And this new one is actually closer to the vintage, uh, the real vintage 2913 from 1957. It's even, it even looks in some ways even more vintagey than the vintage one. So uh, for example, you have things like uh, the lollipop second hand, which was introduced in 1959 in the, in, in the vintage version. Uh, now this is, this is back on this model. Uh, they went back to an aluminum bezel. Uh, the outgoing one had a ceramic bezel. It was almost kind of too modern. So this new one is aluminum, but it's an, kind of a new anodized aluminum kind of uh, process that Omega came up with, which is supposedly twice as hard as a regular uh, anodized aluminum bezel. So hopefully it'll last longer without scratching. Um, you also have a sandwich dial on this one, uh, which Omega actually did with the Seamaster in the 60s. I don't have the exact reference, but it's something that they did. And, you know, it reminds me of Fanerai a little bit, obviously. Uh, another improvement is that on the dial uh, text, they do not have any more, you know, uh, coaxial master chronometer. This is all gone. It's in the back. And in the front, they only have Seamaster 300. So it's much cleaner and it's much more vintage that way. Uh, in terms of the caliber, it's the 8812, I think, uh, 60 hour power reserve. Um, and maybe the construction is a little bit different so that they managed to make the watch a little bit thinner. Now the blue dial was very popular among us, but I think the killer version was really the bronze gold version. Uh, this one is a little bit different from the other two though, because it has a ceramic bezel. Uh, but the color combination with the Fortina vintage loom and the bronze gold work really well. So, you know, uh, Fortina is something that you either you like it or you don't. It's very polarizing. But I think in this case, it works really well because of the case material and the color. And it works even better than the blue one, in my own opinion. So the new alloy is 37.5% gold. So that's nine karat gold, basically. Also mixed with other metal like uh, palladium. So that it's supposed to patina less and slower than some other regular uh, bronze material uh, like the Oris, for example, or possibly even the Tudor Black Bay 58 bronze. Um, the color is kind of like in between their moonshine gold and their Sedna gold. It's a very uh, nice warm bronze gold color. But I have to say though, uh, if I had to choose, uh, I would probably go with a standard black dial because I think the price premium that you have to pay for the bronze gold uh, is really high, especially when it doesn't come on a bracelet. And I think I'll be very happy with a standard black one on a bracelet. And at the end of this wonderful experience, you know, it was getting quite late. It was almost 2 p.m. and we had to rush back to work. But just before we left the boutique, Omega gifted us with this mini loop. Uh, quite a nice gesture. I have to say, you know, this was a really wonderful experience. I had never been invited to a VIP kind of event at a boutique before. We were treated so well. Everybody was, you know, very nice. The manager, William, and then uh, Amanda as well. 
the chef who brought us the food, you know, the champagne, the whole experience makes you feel quite special. I felt like this is what Michael Jackson must have felt like when they used to close Harrods or Disneyland for him, you know. I felt a little bit like a celebrity because I was expecting that we would join uh, you know, an event with, you know, a bunch of collectors and we will look at watches and, you know, talk to each other. But actually the event was just for the three of us. And if we had not been invited, it would have been just for Simon and they would still have closed the boutique for him. So, you know, uh, a big thank you to Omega for this experience. Uh, which one was the one that you liked the most? For me personally, it would be the Seamaster 300 black dial on a bracelet. Uh, love that one and uh, even though I love German watches, I'm seriously considering this as well for my next watch. Uh, so thanks for watching. I hope to do uh, some more of this type of videos if I'm invited again. Um, you know, don't forget to ask yourself what makes you tick. Uh, I'll see you in the next one.